So here we are still at Hari Haralaya Meditation Center um, in the treehouse, which is pretty cool. You can see some farmland back there if you turn the camera. And you can see the kind of jungle that's been set up over here for shade for the retreats. Um, and we were talking earlier, Joel, about uh, about some of your experience with different paths, like um, with Quakers and shamans and things like that. Mm. And you know, this documentary is like the question is, do they do they all kind of lead to the same thing, or do they have different? kind of experiences that flow from those paths. What do you think? So I think there's only one path and the path is the path back to oneself. And so there's a thousand ways to kneel and kiss the earth, a thousand ways to come home again. You know, it's like Rumi says. So anyway, the path is going only back to oneself. So they can have so many different names and forms and ways and like this. So it's, and each person has to find the, the way to unlock and to integrate their, you know, their, for their own situation. So at, at the same time, I believe in the, like <clears throat> tapping into our, our, inner flow and creativity and rhythm and intuition uh, and it also it's important to to surrender to a, a teacher or a certain path and to go through that training in a in a disciplined and rigorous and an intensive way so i don't think that we can i don't know that it's really important to consider if um the, the differences as much as it is to to be aware whether or not we are coming back to our to the source to the to the or whether we're moving away from it hmm. well um i haven't gotten to talk to shamans about this yet but um <clears throat> from what i've seen it seems like it's more of almost like a uh an ecstasy where you're going outside of yourself to uh, experience something on some other plane. Mm. Um, in the shamanic paths, it's working a lot in the subtle planes and with the the powers and with the um, yeah with these kinds of cities with these kinds of energies mm. and um, and using the of course the question is of course when we attain to the self realization. It's like learning to play the trumpet. You know, six different people will pick up the trumpet and play it differently. Some will play jazz, some will play classical music, some will play reggae, mm -hmm. like this. So the self-realization, this, this, this integration or this mastery of the instrument doesn't necessarily mean that everyone's gonna use it, play the instrument in the same way or necessarily for quote unquote good reasons or like that. It can be used in many different ways and it is. So, but you, the, the <coughs> core of the shamanic path is still just to come to, to yourself, to being, to stillness. Again, I'm not. I. It's hard to generalize. Like the shamanic path, the Hindu path. The, it's each teacher who has an alive realization and a living connection with the truth is going to present it in that way, such that a shaman may teach like a Hasidic Jew and a yogi may teach like a Christian mystic or something like this, there's no... So this, this tendency or this, this, this uh, uh, urge to, to categorize the paths and the ways of working, I mean, the, the, the shaman is, is the shaman actually different from the rishi or from the yoga siddha or from the tibetan medicine man or from you know every tradition i've had or from the tantric you know it's the different ways of working with the life energies and the material the manifestation and material to um to well the, and this is where there's differences because some are used in different ways it can be used for different purposes i don't think that there's a necessarily a, a, a unique purpose for the 
shamanic path can be used to heal, it can be used to learn, it can be used to, to destroy, it can be used for different things. So it's more like these are different, it's like uh, in the university, even when we're studying business, then we take many classes like in economics and in uh, world relations and in accounting and in uh, calculus or something like this. So, and these are all different aspects uh, that are highlighted of the of this thing we call business. So, in the same way, this this self-realization or this deep uh, knowing and transcending of a one's of oneself. Then there are many subfields of interest that we can either explore or not explore, and that this will then influence how we play our trumpet. But it's, it's difficult to speak in generalizations about the path in this way. Hmm. Especially because yeah, it's just difficult. Hmm. Okay. Um, so I guess uh, you know a couple of the topics that we wanted to talk about were Everything is kind of generalizations in a certain way. Whenever yes, you're talking about all anything. language, language is an abstraction, is a map, is a generalization. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so so <coughs> if we if we can generalize a little bit, because <laughs> mm. I guess otherwise it's hard to talk. Um, into talking about just um, you know uh, semantics and things like that if you don't generalize a little bit. Mm. Uh, I've, one of the things that I, I've mentioned to you before, one of the things that started me on this path of, of trying to talk to people from a lot of different traditions and see, you know, what their experiences are, is um, I've, I've uh, spent time with masters from the Buddhist tradition who have like a very powerful presence and they generally, generalizing, they generally have a very, a kind of like equanimous, peaceful, neutral, clear, transparent kind of energy. Um, but then when I uh, meet people from, you know, maybe more of the yogic path, uh, paths, you know, everybody with their individual path, but you know, uh, people who have that, uh, that go in that direction tend to have very powerful presence also, um, but maybe more of a warm energy maybe more of uh, a, a love kind of energy. Um, do you, do you, do you notice, do you, have you ever seen what I'm talking about? Have you, have you experienced that? And what do you think could, could uh, explain that? Yeah, I think that this has to do with the personal and impersonal approach. Because we see even within a, like Judaism versus Christianity, the Judaism is a bit colder, the Christianity is a bit warmer. The Judaism believes in this impersonal God, in the in the formless, in this beyond. There's no personality. It's a, so we're dissolving into the formless. So the personality is not important. Instead, it's going. It's it's uh, uh, surrendering the uh, and relaxing back into the impersonal. Whereas in, and that is true in many paths of the yogic traditions as well. So again, we have the whole spectrum. But then we have the contrary, which is the personal approach, which is like Krishna and the Krishna Leelas and the gopis yearning for Krishna and this very much this personality and the form and the feet and remembering and all of this. And so the personal is a direct relationship and, it, and it's working with the bhakti, the strings of the heart and the sense and, and, and at this level. So, some uh, and some paths have both the personal and impersonal as well. It's not necessarily one or the other. So there are certain yogic paths which go through the worship with form and then the formless or the personal and impersonal. And then the, after awakening, some teachers tend to be more personal and more impersonal. Now it would seem within the Buddhist lineages that it tends towards this impersonality as its mind-only path. But in truth, living with many of the Buddhist masters, they'll find that they have a crazy sense of humor and a real wild, kind of playful, childlike manner too. Mm -hmm. So, the, it's not—it's never cut or dry. <clears throat> but I think that it has to do with this distinction of a personal or impersonal.
approach. Hmm. So that that approach, um, you know, we were talking about it before. That approach um, that develops a more of a personal experience inside of the the practitioner versus the the more impersonal one. Do you think that the 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 two paths lead to different kinds of awakening, different kinds of enlightenment, different kinds of dharma, or is it all one? No, there's, by nature, there's only one dharma, one awakening, one enlightenment. There's not different kinds. There aren't different flavors. There's not different... Even to speak of gradations or of this would be wrong. And when we talk in a relative way, and we want to make comparisons and turn it into like we're comparing the speed of cars or something or how sexy different girls are or something like that then we can use that kind of approximation but it's totally wrong it's totally false to to distinguish the the dharma or you know there's no english dharma and chinese dharma and south african dharma or ancient dharma and modern dharma no, by very nature, the Dharma is that which is. Mm. Enlightenment is being in touch with that which is. Mm. So there's no like that which sort of is and that which is on <laughs> Tuesdays and that which is if you got enough money or like that. When we come to the Dharma, that's it. All that we can do is dissolve. All that we can do is surrender. Anything else is too much. Anything else is, is, excess, is excess. Mm. That which is. It's that a, which is Tathagata, no, the yeah. Tathagata. Hmm. And, um, so, so then if we get there through personal, if we get there through impersonal, if we get there through laughing, if we get there through crying, if we get there through dancing, if we get there through, through you know, uh, sitting on our ass for a couple of years, the point is to get there. It doesn't matter how we get there, there's no special reward for getting there the quickest or for getting there the most difficult way or anything that it's totally unimportant the vehicle once we've arrived there because again the other trouble is to make to become attached and then up to the to the to the path or the practice and then make a big deal out of the practice like the practice is for the sake of practicing hmm. so then um if all these vehicles kind of go to the same place and maybe all of the uh, the they go to the same place, the only place. There's only one yeah. place to go, too. It's not like they're all going to Rome or they're all going to Siem Reap or something. They're going to one place, that's the only place. It's the place where everything is going anyway. That which is. <laughs> that which is. It's where it is anyway. It's not even going there. It is there. It always has been there. We're the ones who have to come back to here. That's the issue. There's no. We're not going somewhere. We're... we're arriving here from wherever we are and we already are here which makes the whole thing totally crazy <laughs> right and makes it totally absurd <clears throat> so if we're coming to that which is um there's so many ways to see that which is you can you can say oh it's my experience is that which is this moment of experience right? that which is is not an individual thing so any experience is coming through the individual senses and the like the location of uh, and the the, the net web of past and causation mm. so that which is this first has to, this has to be transcended the individuality mm. so uh, is what I'm trying to get at is um, this tree Right, you could say the tree is already concept. There's no here. this. There's no tree. There's nothing here. <laughs> so what is? What is it that is? That which is. What is that? Isn't that the answer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. That's exactly right. <laughs> huh. As soon as we, you know, again, it's we're we're grabbing to the finger that's pointing at the moon. Mm. That which is remains like that. You know, they call mu. The Zen would call mu, or they'd just give you a big slap or something. Mm. You know what I mean? It's, we need, it's not in the realm of the conceptualizing mind. It can't grab it, it can't play with it. But that, that which is, it's like the river flowing. You put your hands and it falls through your hands. You pick it up, it falls through your hands. Mm. As soon as you hold it, even to conceptualize it as an idea or memory, it's in a cage, it's dead. The present, the present moment is dead. It can't, be, it can't be touched. 
So let's just see where the finger is pointing. I'm not grabbing at the finger, just wondering where it's pointing. Is it pointing at, is it pointing at what I'm experiencing as I sit here? Or is it pointing at something that is outside of my own experience? That's just exists without me being here. There's, there's no you to get in the way of the pointing. I mean, it's not, it, it could, it, could it be pointing at everything and nothing simultaneously? You know, there's no, it has nothing to do, the, 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 this moment has nothing to do with any idea of you or any individuality or any story about an individual existing within time or any of the particular cells or molecules or the space. You know, it has, it is, it is not in any way conditioned or subject to anything to do with you or any of the other 8 billion humans or the trillions of ants and beetles and salamanders and fish and birds. I mean, if, if you're that important, then every single other human and human idea and human perspective and all the other species must be equally as significant as important and real. So either all of it is or none of it is. It can't be, it can't be this in between. We have to be rigid about our, our thinking. Usually, as Chogim explains, we're caught in this, uh, in the primitive mind in these primitive ways of thinking and understanding about space, time, causation, and self, and we're applying our ideas very haphazardly. So we have to to apply the Dharma. This is as important as as the as the sitting practice, as the asana and as the all of these practices that we're doing is not enough because we still have to digest it and then apply the Dharma in the regular life in order to integrate it. But the energy to apply the Dharma, the wisdom to skillfully apply the Dharma only comes through sitting meditation, through the stillness practice. Mm. And that's that's how you find that which is by sitting and in the stillness and then you, you have to it. slow down because that which is is, it always is, it never every moment then it it there's only that. But the problem is it's like our minds, it's like a caught it's it's so distracted by that which is not, but seems to be that we've gone missing it so in the, it's like a slowing everything down the same like when we look at a movie it seems like continuous but it's really these frames that are going very very close together so we need to be able to slow down the frames through deep concentration practice and and uh, calmness the shamatha practice and then it then we can see the frames and see in between the frames and we understand that that which is and that which is not or that which is the the foundation, what we call the the background or the backdrop, and then the the things that are changing on the surface. Because normally our consciousness is completely uh, focused on the objects around us. Right? We don't see the space in which they're occurring. In the same when we look at a book, we see the words, but we don't see the space. So instead, in meditation, we learn to shift the attention from the objects back to the space. And the space, we can say, is that which is. If that which is is an unknown, though. It's the unknown. It's the stream of the unknown. So we can't put, we can't uh, limit it with some kind of statement. Hmm. So it's kind of the flow of the present moment and we can't really define it because it's always changing it's infinite dimensions uh, and, set and, and within one another same like our body has infinite dimensions there's the surface of our skin and all the different parts of it but even that is composed of cells the cells are composed of parts and there's bones and glands and blood and nerves and and then molecules and then even space between that so mm -hmm. in the same way that even this body is an un explainable, infathomable universe within universes, then the, the present moment is the seed of mm. all universes which is continually giving birth to itself in infinite dimensions, mm. but it's not a personal thing. As soon as we try to make it personal, then it, we get stuck. Mm. So, so it's, it's the, the totality of everything just occurring, the process and yeah. as it's flowing. They can call sometimes the Tao or like this. Mm, like the Tao Te Ching when we read this, the Tao can't be spoken, mm. the real Tao. Ah, okay. But but uh, 
can we we can we really know all of that because we can't really know all the molecules all the atoms no we can't know it we can only be it that's why it's a being it's not a knowing it's not an activity of knowing we need to relax into it expand into it the i the ego is a contraction every thought is a contraction of mind energy also mm. so instead of contracting we need this expansion and then we are that we are the present moment we are the breath we are this 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 so no we can't know it we cannot know it it's impossible to know we have to give up on knowing it immediately and we have to be it hmm. okay what was what's the, the signal and signal battery very oh. low oh, okay um good to know that was that was amazing that was good yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that okay was you can shut it for